Hey there, Rulers, DMO73 here, and we're back with a feature match between Paul Reisman on Alter Olivia versus Josh Fury on Lenith and Tree One. Let's go ahead and jump right in. This session brought to you by Odyssey Games for pre-orders and sealed product, CCG Prime for tons of singles and supplies, Cardo Doco for international rulers looking for products, and FoulLibrary.com for articles and wonderful deck lists, as well as our guest lecturer members Vite Raman and Darren Noblock. Class is in session. So here we are getting into it. Sorry for that little visual glitch there. We have Paul on the left playing his favorite, Olivia, uh, playing against Josh on Lenith and Tree 1. Very cool to see these kind of older rulers featured here. As a reminder, hey, when this is coming out, you have about a month until Foulfest. We hope to see you there. There is a link in the description to get all that information. Probably going to be one of the biggest events in the United States for Forcible this year. You are not going to want to miss it. Um, anytime a new set comes out, Paul says, is there any new duels for Olivia? And for sure enough, when the ban list came out, uh, we were like, oh, Alter came off the ban list. You know who can make a lot of resonators really quick for an Alter? Uh, Olivia can. Uh, plus there's some other cool text here that Paul has been trying out and has been excited to show you. So he's excited to see how that plays out. And then obviously Josh playing the new stuff with Lenith and Tree, all of that Seven Kings reveal from outside the game. Uh, as being able to use Alice, um, the Guardian, uh, of the Seven Lands, Avatar Alice again, which is nice. And you see the playmat to match, which is pretty fun. So we'll go ahead and get into here. This could end either very quickly or very, uh, take some time, especially with cool cards like Muse staring at and Girl staring at. Those are cards that in general are pretty helpful to use against Tree to make Alice feel less good. Um, using that filter for Lenneth here, beginning of the game after doing mulligans. Oh no, just waiting on doing mulligans here. And we go into the first game with Josh going first. Paul's very excited with gesturing abounds. First stone here, Amadeus Crystal. That's going to be a white stone. Paul is only running one ruler, uh, as is Paul. And you see he has some pretty op good opening stuff there. He's got um, uh, Diva has been a really good card in general for water decks uh, as well to be able to kind of like push through and do some pseudo ramping. Um, you see we also, I saw a Ray Asnable in the deck in the hand there, which was pretty nice. Um, I have to see if Josh has any kind of opening lines here other than just letting Paul take a free turn and maybe holding up some interaction. Although with only white, one white, there's really not much interaction that Josh might have outside of say something like a, um, uh, lingering scent of a fairy to flash in his revealer. Now here's an interesting thing from Paul here. He does the 4C trigger and then you're going to see him go into a god art to get Dolly. There's a world where this line actually could have been done a little bit better by in response to the 4C trigger you do the Dolly. Uh, that way you get the Dolly and then you get to you know do the line here that you're going to see him do bouncing back to the dollars your hand but then even after all that resolves then you get to 4C. So now we get to see what that card is off the top after we've shuffled the deck and have a little bit better advantage there. So Dolly is going to bounce itself back to hand. And then we're going to see a coin plus one to play a Ray Asnable. Um, this is pretty good uh, in the fact that, you know, because it costs one less because we had that Dolly. Dolly produced uh, or we got to produce... Um, make it one cheaper by having Dolly bounce itself back to our hands. So we get this turn one Ray Asimo and just say no enter effects. And against Josh's deck, that's pretty helpful considering how he wants to be able to get those seven Kings reveals. I will say again, there's a little bit of a more optimum line you could take here because you could just, uh, for the same amount of will, just to get a second body on board, being you put the dolly back into your hand, you replay the dolly, have it bounce itself back to a hand again, you uh, then recast the dolly with coin, have that dolly produce blue, and then that blue from that dolly plays the Ray Asnable. It spends the same amount of will overall, it's just more steps and gets you a second body on board, uh, which is pretty helpful. That being said, against Josh, uh, Tree One does have access to starry rage so putting two water cards onto the field maybe just saving the dolly for later might be uh, the better line overall overall this though right asnable on turn one is a very strong play against leneth and tree one so we'll see exactly how this plays out for him <laughs> especially considering only having access to the white stone uh if the next stone that comes down isn't able to produce red then josh might be in a little bit of trouble Paul doing a lot of gesturing here, and I remember when we were at Locals recording this, he was just calling Lenneth Reflect Refrain because her ability is just the filter from Reflect Refrain, and I was like, Paul, no, it's Lenneth. I understand it has the same Reflect Refrain ability. 
that's lettuce. It was just being silly. Paul was in a mood, and we were glad to be able to get this recording in to uh, capture that mood on film. Paul said, it's been a bit since I've been in a recording uh, since the brain hurt one. I'm going to give you all the energy I can muster, and here it is. Going into second turn here, nothing before recovery. The biggest problem for Josh at this point in time is that a lot of the revealers all cost two. Uh, and so there's nothing really that Josh can do before recovery to get something revealed, meaning that he has to kind of go to it either. If he wants to get something revealed this turn, it has to be kind of a tap out. Or if he wants to, um, you know, he, he at max kind of has two, one reveal out of himself in the next turn. Uh, and again, not hitting red there is pretty rough. This... Um, Paul kind of has a little bit of free reign to be able to go in here. Something that would be pretty gross is if we had one more will and we could just go alter plus uh, fish drive. We could just get a hook. Um, and then um, Paul accidentally drawing two cards without having seen the bottom one. Uh, get that filter. We know Now we get to see what that card is and put it back on bottom. Paul, etiquette, please. Um, the idea of at this point in time, if we could alter hook Leneth tree it would be gross uh setting back especially since we could put the amadeus holy crystal back on top and then we'd be at just basic white and then pretty much lock leneth out of the game at that point which would be really really weird uh to do especially considering how we were like well it's you know probably not going to be that likely now we did see that uh josh did have a um Kilua enters or Kilua fossil girl on top of deck, so that'll be helpful for later turns um, to be able to deal with an altar. But for right now, it's not it's not helping. So down comes that expiring diva, and we hit a muse staring at. This is pretty good for Paul um, because it's actually a really excellent way to do something against tree. Uh, the turn you're going to try to finish them off, you can do muse staring at in the upkeep and make it so that that Alice Guardian doesn't get to enter the field. Uh, so you can just freely swing out, which is kind of huge. It does take one more swing. Right, because you have to have the replacement effect of the Yggdrasil, but then the next attack would be lethal, and you don't have to deal with the Lenneth or the uh, Alice Guardian um, stopping you from dealing damage. Joshua's still just staring down. This Ray Asimov saying, I'm not really sure how I'm going to deal with that. I need to have a red source here. Finally, do see the red source. There is the uh, Light Moon Fragment. Uh, this would be helpful because we can get Starry Rage, right? Starry Rage is the main way we're going to get this Ray Asimov off the board. It doesn't have a way to protect itself uh, from a board wipe. Um, it is going to cost two, though, which is not great. Uh, it is going to have to essentially spend Josh's entire turn. Um, if Josh does have something like Lingering Scent to the Fairy for World Tree Fairy, or uh, can fo you know can follow up with um, a nice one drop green play, and maybe like a Lorite or a Kilo of Fossil Girl to deal with whatever Paul's going to go with, that'd be helpful for sure. Um, there's also a question of how much do you commit to a Starry Rage? Like, is popping two things enough here? Um, is popping one thing enough here? Um, Especially, you know, do you do it now? We are doing it proactively here with the Starry Rage to try to um, answer this uh, board. I'm not sure I would go for it at this point in time because especially the... Um, we're probably going to have something cast in response here. Um, oh, choosing no to say no. I don't have anything to respond to here. We're going to lose our... Um, Lose our lady and lose our Ray Asnable and takes the board off and gets the will from the um, uh, Diva out of being in contention, which is kind of big. Does leave the one leftover will to which we do see a World Tree Fairy come down just to get a second reveal. This will be a 7-7 seven, seven flyer. Uh, we are going to see a Lorite, though, come down and stop the reveal. So right now it's just a 5-5 five, five flyer. Um, 
and you see Paul's favorite guard, Institute, coming in here. Uh, probably going to see some play line off of that. We also have a fully tapped out Josh. And this, with the Starry Rage being gone at this point, uh, reestablishing another big board of water cards would be pretty huge. It'd be pretty hard outside of getting Phoenix active for... Um, Josh to be able to answer another Ray Asnoble that would might come down here, um, or even just a wide board in general, um, which puts Paul in a pretty good spot. Do you see Paul's favorite card, Magic Stone Research Institute, come down? We're going to sack off that duplicate stone, see what kind of new stone we get. We do see the Stone of Tide, so we're up to three. So now that Laureate is a 7-7, um, which is pretty awesome. Also could consider just playing a Dolly right now, which is going to happen. Um... Choosing to probably, dr I honestly would consider the idea of bouncing back to hand here. Um, we're one well short. You see, there is another Ray Asnable in hand there. Um, just one will short of being able to get the Ray down. We're going to swing in for seven. Uh, this tells Josh, like, hey, do you want to try to block your 5-5 five, five with a 7? Uh, or a 7-7 seven, seven with a 5-5? Five, five? No? Okay, down to 24. Now, Josh does have some life gained back in the deck in the form of uh, Karukion um, to be able to gain life, the, the contract uh, regalia. So certainly not um, necessarily terrified. The biggest concern here for Josh is that we know that there's a Muse staring at in Paul's hand, right? So the turn that Paul wants to go in, we can just go Muse staring at in recovery, swing in, and make sure that we don't have to worry about any kind of Guardian Alice. Strangely enough, Tree having to kind of go more uh, less control and more mid-range to try to keep up more its turn versus opponent's turn. Something like a World Tree Dragon could be helpful here once we get some more reveals. Um, the problem is that Institute right now, right? That's the biggest problem for World Tree Dragon as well. It costs a lot of will to be able to burn through this board. And you also have something that has barriers, so that's also not very helpful. Although the filtering might, might be what we need. Speak of the Dragon and it appears. Here is World Tree Dragon. We're going to get a second filter. There's a world where we use Ray Asnable here to cancel the enter effect, but I feel like it might be better suited for something like the contract uh, if the contract comes down. The World Tree Dragon's not going to do much here. It's just going to pump the fairy up to being a 7-7. Seven, seven. The dragon's up to being a 7-7 seven, seven that can burn something for 4. That's not a huge deal and only can do it once because we only have access to one white or one fire wheel right now. <coughs> So we do see the Arla come down out of the reveal. And here comes that Karukia. Now here's where I would consider pitching the Ray to uh, stop it, getting its enter effect. It can't possibly go into immediate contract though. That's something to keep in mind though. If you stop the enter effect, it can't contract though because it will be at seal uh, six or it'll be at seal seven minus two is six. Or minus two is five, so it'll be one stone too low. Um, <coughs> Paul choosing not to stop the enter effect here is an interesting choice. Um, we might be trying to consider the idea of trying to pop the contract instead, um, which I think I can understand considering Josh still has will available. If we stopped the enter effect here, there might be another fairy that comes down to tap um josh out and then we see a contract that way although at that point in time again josh is tapped out so um paul's gonna respond to the end the attempted contract with surging lightning uh to um destroy something not randomly uh, because he has uh, olivia here and so in response to contract we just pop it uh, and get rid of it so it can't successfully flip over Josh says, yep, gonna have to scoop that up, kind of talking through exactly how it works, because the fact that the activate ability still uses the chase, 
And so if we destroy it in response to it attempting to resolve its activate ability, it won't be on the field to successfully contract. And as such, we stop Lenith from coming into play. And Paul does have a pretty good hand grip here. He does have access to a couple of surging lightnings or lightning storm, whatever the board wipe is to be able to deal with these two uh, creatures on the side of Josh. I wouldn't be surprised if next turn we see some kind of Ray Asna will come down. Um, certainly feels like it would be the play line for me. Uh, even with just leaving one will open, I think it's worth it going into this, especially because you'd have two things that were very large and a barrier, uh, and we've already burned the Starry Rage for Lenneth. The biggest concern being that these guys are kind of big. Um, although, in my mind, you can just throw the dolly uh, into um, the fairy and get it off the board. And you're only dealing with one creature, got plenty of life to be able to answer it, and you stop all the enter effects from Josh, which feels very, very nice. Looking at the board here, Paul might be considering playing the Ray Asnamal. Might also be considering just passing turn, although I think that's a little bit incorrect. Uh, at the very least, I would want to swing the Dolly into the um, World Tree Fairy to try to get rid of it. Just one less body. I mean, if Josh gets a full turn of revealing, he needs to reveal two more, three more. Swings in for seven with the Lorite. Josh says, that's fine. I'll go down to uh, 27. Second Dolly comes down here. This is the same line that I kind of mentioned before. Bounces the Lorite back to his hand, which is interesting. And down does come the Ray Asnable at that point. So that's pretty nice. Now we have three things on board that have barrier. So the World Tree Dragon's not going to be able to hurt stuff. We have access to Lorite. We do see a, in response to the cast of the Ray Asnable, Lumia comes down here so we can heal back up. Um, I think this is okay. I don't think you really mind. You weren't going to be finishing off this turn anyway. I do think, though, we need to swing the Dolly into the World Tree Fairy. Like, that, I think, needs to happen. Otherwise, we're in for a bit of a concern. Um, we have Lorite to be able to stop something. Paul looks like he's going in for Fish Drive, and I really hope he doesn't cast it here. Um... The biggest issue to me at this point in the fact is that we have a f two flyers um, that can do a bunch of damage, um, and I'd rather just um, get at least one of them off the board here. Paul looks like, though, deciding because of the fact that we're not uh, concerned about stuff being able to get shot, we're just going to go ahead and go for the fish drive. We're going to make that non-random, uh, and we're going to... Um, get six one one tokens that'll all actually be seven sevens here um very very large so we're definitely threatening lethal next turn and we do have that mew staring at so that to me puts josh on a turn of just kind of hold back and wait and see if we can get some more revealed that would be great uh but the world of trade dragon right now can't even spot remove one of these uh fish tokens just by itself that being said if we can pop the magic stone research institute we're in a much better shape do we see we have access to another fire source here? So we do have the option to do a Starry Rage to pop the, if we can reveal to pop the Institute and get two of these tokens off the board, um, which would be pretty good. It would also mean that your World Tree Dragon and Fairy would be bigger uh, than the Ray Asnable, uh, at which point in time we're in a much better shape to be able to keep ourselves protected does cost a lot of will for the turn would leave josh with just one will available um, which is not the best looks like josh doing the filter here potentially yep down comes that starry rage Starry Rage being used here because it hits any non-Magic Stone entity, so we can reveal a Darkness Ruler to pop that Magic Stone Research Institute. Uh, get that puff off the board. Feels a little bit weird, but 
does help pretty significantly. Stems the bleeding by quite a bit. Going up to eight for the pumps on these guys. They're both 11s. It's a good amount of damage. Certainly nothing that Paul is going to block without uh, throwing a token under the bus, but again, flyers, so no way to block it even if we wanted to. Josh does have to be careful here with how much he extends um, because again, we know there is that Muse staring at uh, we know we no longer have enter effects to be able to heal ourselves. So we got to be really careful. Swing it in for 11. Paul says that's fine. I'll go down to 2,000. Swing it in for another 11. Paul says that's fine. I'll go down to 9. Holding on to that Mew staring at. If we had another Institute, it'd be kind of gross. Uh, playing Institute plus Mew staring at in this next turn would be absolutely backbreaking. Um... As it stands, finding 3,400 damage is a little weird. We do have access to be able to wipe this board, though, which is really nice. So there's a world where, as Paul, I think you proactively board wipe here um, to force Josh to consider whether or not he's going to spot remove these tokens. Go in for as much damage as you want and then just sit on the rest of your will so that you can respond to whatever Josh is going to do and set yourself up for a next turn uh, pre-recovery Muse staring at to go for the lethal. Um, that would be kind of the line that I take personally. Um, it, it keeps a lot of the threat off board and Josh's deck doesn't have much in the way of swiftness. And a Muse staring at also is really nice here because the only kind of instant speed protection that Josh has is Illumia. That's not going to get him any value and uh, instant speed token generation, which um, you staring at would prevent. Um, so that's the kind of line that I would think of here, especially knowing that we have double of lightning surge in hand to be able to wipe boards twice. Paul deciding to look at how much damage we have here on board. Really considering what we're gonna do here before moving into combat. Like we do have Muse staring at. We have that Lorite here. We have another Enter effect. So like we're in a really good spot here to be able to um, like do the Lightning Surge and leave up second Lightning Surge Muse, uh, second Lightning Surge Lorite. We're in a spot to be able to use um, Muse staring at plus Ray Asnable. Like you have a lot of things that we can do here to mess with this board. This is pretty decent here. Getting the Ray Asnable damage and then going in for a Lightning Surge. <laughs> in response to a block to try to get an additional 400 damage in. Um, sorry, Pulsing Thunder. The other one is Lightning Surge. I always get the two of them mixed up. Josh ultimately choosing not to burn any of his will there is very interesting. Uh, and we're gonna go in for the tokens, see exactly what kind of value we're gonna get off of it here. Going a combat one at a time here with these tokens to try to chip down. <coughs> and there we go. We are going to see that attempt of light of the world tree. This would generate three tokens, which actually on the crackback would just be lethal for Paul. Um, Paul going in here. I Temps, looks like he might be going for Muse staring at. He's considering it just to stop the, like it doesn't stop the reveal though, which is one of the reasons why I don't like using Muse staring at here. I think I would rather use the second Pulsing Thunder after the tokens have come into play um, because it gets them off board. It saves the Muse staring at for later and you still have one will to be able to interact with stuff. Um, it, it, I don't know. It just feels like Muse staring at does have remnant though. So I guess there's a point of it where it's just use as like few resources as possible. Um, it just kind of feels weird to do that here. We, we are gonna get to swing in, um, get to get really aggressive. Um, and we'll see, see what happens at that point in time. We are fully tapped out though at this point. 
So we'll see what comes down after this. Well, we have one will open, so we can stop Ray Asimov, but there's no enter effects anyway, and we have a Lorite, um, which could be useful, weirdly enough, just like if Josh proactively pays zero to dig uh, with Lenneth, you just say no, because it makes me think that then Josh's hand isn't that great. Um, but we'll see how this goes. Call stone, gets a filter. I think whether I use the Lorite or the Ray Asnabal is pretty heavily based on what we see here from Josh in response to his filter. Now, this is where I would stop it. He left that card on top and then chose to use the Lenneth filter ability. In my mind, that means he wants that card. And so I would Lorite the Lenneth ability to stop the dig, personally. Like, it feels weird to pay one to just stop what is a hand filter, but the knowledge here being the fact that he saw that card, kept it on top, knowing what the board state was and then filtered into it uh makes me feel like that is a card that is going to be very important for him in this environment or in this exact moment and so i don't want him to be able to dig for it uh, and so i would just burn the lore right here on the leneth ability to just say no you cannot have that card um it feels weird but when you're already kind of up and you're staring at answers in hand like Paul has, putting Josh on the back foot is probably your best bet. Um, so, I don't know. It just feels like it's that's the moment where I would choose to use the Lorite uh, because we already have enter effects covered. So we're going to have to burn this Lorite somewhere. It's the only interaction we have this turn. Josh fully looking at this hand like there's something so insane in it that it has to be something, right? Really wondering what, what we have going on in Josh's mind here. Looking at a, you know, it could be the 16 drop saying, do I really feel like tapping out? Maybe. Dragon doesn't really help here. Oh, yeah, that's the 16 drop that we're thinking about here, counting the number of things we have revealed uh, so that we can fully tap out and play this massively expensive card. Glad to see this coming down in the first match on the channel. Four tree. Yep, paying all six. Um, and we just slam Inheritor of the Star Legacy. If that was the top card of his deck and we stopped him from filtering, I feel like Paul wins this game uh, because we have them used staring at. Um, this is potentially, based on what Josh draws, this is potentially backbreaking. Um, having Avatar of the Seven Lands, Alice, be eternal, um, just like, because again, it's Resonator Shoe Control until the end of the game, right? So we get to draw four cards, we get to gain 4,000 life, you go back at the 5,100, we see what we hit, and we get to put three uh, non-Magic Stone entities into the field. If one of these is an Avatar Alice, uh, Paul is in for a very, very, very bad, bad time. Because that thing's going to have Eternal. And there it is. Guardian of the Seven Lands. Avatar Alice. That thing has Eternal and takes all of the damage that Josh would be taking. We also get a World Tree Dragon. Um, it won't have an enter effect. But it's still a good body. Um, just bring it up on screen. This thing is taking all the damage that would be dealt to it. And it has Eternal. So Paul literally can't kill Josh. Uh, while this card exists on field anymore. Unless we find a girl staring at. Or a mute, or a way to bounce it back. And just for good measure. We also have a Karukion. Not doesn't have the enter effect. Because of the um, Ray Asdable. But there it is. <laughs> yeah. Realizing it doesn't get to do any kind of effects, but still a massive board state here. Now, uh, Paul could, uh, Josh could use attempt to contract right now, um, which ironically then the Lorite has some use because we can just, um, you know, Lorite the enter effect or Lorite the activate ability to stop him from being able to contract and being in even more bigger danger. Um, but we'll see exactly what comes out of it. 
I'm not sure if Paul is playing any copies of girls staring at in the main board. That would certainly be helpful in this environment because you could still just turn everything on Josh's side of the field off uh, and you'd still have enough will. So like you're weirdly in a position where you can do like girls staring at, muse staring at, and yeah, there's the Lorite. You're at a weird spot where because of how many stones we have, Paul could legitimately go girl staring at, muse staring at, pulsing thunder, wipe the whole board, uh, go in for lethal. The problem there is Josh is a 5100 life. <laughs> uh, we don't have an institute anymore. But you still need to get this stuff off the board. Even the idea of um, muse stare, girl staring at plus pulsing thunder would be really, really huge here for uh, Paul. Uh, just to get that avatar Alice and World Tree Dragon off the board and kind of put himself back in the same position he was in before. Callstone with Olivia. Paul is slamming something here. And there is the altar. Um, this is pretty nice. This is pretty good. Uh, that does give the deck at least something to be able to try to find its something in the deck to try to answer this board state. Uh, there's no real reason to swing uh, because um, even if Josh chooses not to block, the Avatar Atlas will just take all the damage. So sacking these tokens to the altar is just like the next best thing that you need to do. Um, there is something to be said about the idea of maybe like sacking them and then like in response to him trying to block, we crack to go get something. We're sacking five, which is very clearly going to be a hook. Um, this is helpful, <laughs> Captain Hook the Pirate. Uh, we can put two Resonators back in their owner's hands so we can put the World Tree Dragon and the uh, Avatar Alice back in his hand. So now we can start doing damage, which is good, um, and then start to swing in. Avatar Alice does take six to cast, so it would eventually tap Josh out again to put it on the field, at which point in time, Paul can continue to try to struggle. Uh, the problem is we need two hooks. <laughs> or you need another Olivia, or you need a, another Dolly, so you can recast the hook for five. <laughs> Paul getting a free turn to swing in here, though, doesn't feel bad, at least getting some damage off the board. <coughs> Overall dealing a grand total of uh, 1,900 damage there, uh, taking Josh down to 32. Oh, and also just trying to get, while he has the opportunity to kind of force Josh's only play to be trying to uh, play the Avatar Alice again, which I get as a tap out ability is just to do Pulsing Thunder and destroy all the regalia. So this way, uh, Josh does just have nothing on field and has to kind of commit to what he's going to be doing. Um, World Street Dragon at this point though, feels really, really good. Uh, World Street Dragon is one red pay for a thousand damage. Um, it's certainly going to make it very difficult for Paul to sneak in any damage here. I honestly think there's a world where because um, we have so much on field and our life total is so high. We just call stone, uh, play world flame dragon or world trade dragon and just spot remove the heck out of Paul's uh, field. You can kill the dragon. You can kill the hook. You can kill the Lorite. You can kill one of the tokens. Um, you can block the Ray Astable. The dollies are only swinging in for four. You don't really care about that. Um, it's not going to be enough to trigger your avatar Alice. And at the end of Paul's turn, if you want to, you just quick cast in Avatar Alice if Paul decides not to go for anything too aggressive. Um, just feels like we're, we've turned the corner real quick here, um, and it's going to be hard for Paul to kind of keep up other than getting a second hook. Especially with Paul only being at 900 life. Um, slamming World Tree Dragon here uh, also feels insane because that world tree dragon kills paul on the crackback next turn right so it'll have six revealed it's gonna get to burn a ton of damage um so yeah it's gonna get to swing in for 15 for lethal and yeah exactly what you see josh doing here it's just like hey it has eternal it can't be destroyed it can pop your board and keeps me alive. It can block your Ray Astable, essentially saying, hey, you have one turn or you die. Um, and I'm not really sure if anything that Paul has at this point in time to be able to answer that. Paul 
call call on that last stone, seeing if there's a filter that might help him. I don't know if he has any form of card draw though. Looks at the board state. Looks at the World Tree Dragon, looks at the life totals, can stop the Avatar Alice from coming from the deck, can't stop the Avatar Alice from coming in from the hand. Doesn't have a way to deal with the Eternal that I can think of. It would have to be Girl Staring At. Like, Girl Staring At plus Muse Staring At is the only out here, and even then it doesn't actually win you the game, um, because World Tree Dragon just kills you on the crackback, and you don't have enough damage represented on board to present lethal. Um, right now, you're only representing 19, 23, 27, 28, 2900 damage. You just don't have the additional damage or the additional reach to get there. So, Paul kind of reviewing his options, but from my perspective, I do believe this game is done, and we're going to see the scoop up here in just a minute. Pulsing Thunder, Ray Astemol doesn't help us here, unfortunately. And then there is the extension, and we go into a game two. Paul, looking at that opening hand here, does see his favorite ever card, Institute, as well as a Muse staring at. Does decide to ship the Institute, it looks like. Going to be on the draw. Hook in hand feels bad. There is a Lorite here. Moving into main phase, looks like Paul's going to go for a dolly to produce some extra will before Josh gets to go into main phase. Only thing I can think of there is it's going to be a, maybe a Loki's insight. Um, that feels real weird to me to go for a Loki's insight this proactively, specifically against this deck. It has a pretty solid blend of quick cast and non quick cast stuff, though I think the major advantage here is that you could get to grab the uh regalia like getting to take the regalia out of the hand would be pretty huge but as you can see here that's a handful of not quick cast and we just got a sealed one-eyed dragon and now we just get to play world uh tree fairy next turn we play a second world tree fairy and a world tree dragon like it's i don't know this feels behindish honestly actually strangely enough in my position i feel like as josh i'd play the world tree dragon first uh weirdly if we hit red um maybe the world because like the barrier for world tree fairy doesn't help we hit the amadeus holy crystal on one though so that is not great we're gonna filter off of the lenneth that's the other reason why i feel like the loki's insight feels weird because now you know josh can just do a little bit of digging although i do think you just play world tree dragon right or world tree fairy right now just to put a body on board and start those reveals and have your one your turn one body be bigger than uh, paul's like t0 dolly play See the pass from Josh. Checking what's in hand here. We do see the aspiring diva come down, so we're gonna get to dig a little bit. This is pretty helpful. Unfor did see the fish drive. And strangely enough, going for the fish drive here. Uh, putting the six bodies out is a little bit strange. I think that's because there's the Institute in hand that he might have kept or drew into another one potentially to try to say, hey, I'm going to start threatening you next turn, um, which is a little bit of a weird way to tell Josh to just like don't play any cards. I, I could see the world where we're going into this because of the fact that we don't have a second red uh, and we saw that there was no starry rage in the opening hand so this board state feels overall pretty solid um, especially getting able to play institute following up on it. Um, it just comes down to you know if we see world because in this situation if we see world flame tree dragon come down like that we don't we know that it can't burn anything and we know that we're not going to um 
have to deal with a starry rage uh, so we can kind of just free slam the institute and go in the biggest problem is now is both of these guys are seven sevens uh so um even with two stones and institute these guys these uh fish are only five fives which is not great Maybe the chant thought is, though, to just try to aggro out. Uh, these guys are playing on a clock. Uh, they were playing at our locals, so we did have time on round uh, as a factor here when they were playing the recording. Um, so we'll see exactly whether or not maybe that's playing into why we have such an aggressive uh, play line from Paul after burning through a lot of his time for the match on game one. Something you still got to be considerate of if you're playing in a tournament environment, especially with the new end of match procedures. Going in for damage against Paul... See, not able to go for a turn to Institute. No green off the top there. Pretty rough for Paul. That's going to make this very, very difficult. Um, these tokens are going to get absolutely frayed alive by um, the dragon. second fish drive in hand i mean you know if we had an altar if we had an altar this would be pretty solid um because altar could just again reset us to amadeus the holy crystal with the hook if we have a second hook um and get things going even an altar here to go for an electra might be pretty solid because then we could just kind of clear the board put a bunch of pressure on on an off attribute color uh and do some pretty dam damaging stuff there um but Unfortunately, did not have the altar in hand for this time around. One white, we're going to see that second fairy come down, get another reveal. No way to stop it for Paul. Um... Yeah, we're, we're in trouble because now uh, this is a one turn clock for Paul with how much damage he's already taken and how much damage he's going to take this next turn. And he has not done any damage to Josh at this point. Swinging in for nine. He's already taken seven. Swinging in for another nine. Do you finally see the Institute here? Um, <laughs> looks like Josh was joking about like in response to the in Institute, we're gonna throw down Starry Rage. Um, so this isn't like terrible, right? These dragon, these guys are now bigger than dragon. He's got th uh, three unique stones, it looks like, and we can play a Muse Steering at, so seven at a time. So seven, uh, 14, 21, um, 28, 35, 43. Uh, 54 damage represented. So with a Muse staring at, like, this is what he wanted to do last turn, is push this pressure in. Um, so we're going to see exactly how that plays out. The problem is, though, he has to kill this turn or answer these bodies, which is one of the reasons why part of me thinks that we should just, like, swing into these guys to get them off board, but our, our fish aren't as big as his. So, like, or... or aren't as big as his fairies and stuff so you get those first three swings we're gonna go down to 21 we see the fourth swing or take 21 we're gonna go down to 19 takes the fourth swing here the fifth swing does take that as well goes down to um oh no in response to four swing we're going down to 12 seeing if we can take uh, josh down to five josh says yes i am gonna go down to five we swing in for attempting a uh, muse staring at now this is saying that we're not going to be able to cheat anything in for the whole turn it's unchaseable this is going to make it so that that fairy alice doesn't get to do anything or that guardian alice doesn't even get to come to the field that can't be chased um there's nothing that josh can do to respond to that however before damage is dealt uh, because paul is doing this in response to attacks or before attacks we just get to see this lumia come down and that is so disheartening um, because the Lumia will be able to just gain Josh back up to 4,000 and then Paul can just block it or Paul can, uh, can't really do anything at that point in time. We can block the fish. Um, the Dolly can kill one of these. 
Um, Dolly can't even kill either of... No, I can kill one of the flyers. But at that point in time, there's really nothing he can do. So he just says, you know what? You got it. Scoops it up. And that's it for us. So thank you all so much for watching. Tune in for later for the deck profiles. And until next time, this is GMO73 saying class dismissed.